Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how the heck do I analyze products without actually purchasing them? So I got this question, it wasn't actually a question. It was more more like hate mail, what I ended up getting. Specifically the video about liquid dirt, people are upset about it. Um, and people wanna know, how do I have the right to judge a product based on the label and not actually using the product. So I do this because I would go literally broke if I had to buy every single product I reviewed for you guys. I love you, but my bank account does not. So, and YouTube doesn't pay that much. Just saying. That's why I actually put like a marker of like 500 likes before I test the product, which I'm going to. I'm just waiting for it to warm up outside. I want to give the trial an actual fair chance at this. I don't want to be using different grow tents and stuff because there may be too much temperature variation in there, lighting variation because there would be different lights being used at different ages. I'm taking this very seriously. I'm going to wait till it warms up outside. And that's when we're going to start the liquid dirt experiment. But in the meantime, I actually want to do this video both to comment, post it to people who are unsure about how I do this, but also help you guys actually analyze these product labels to determine whether or not it's worth your hard earned money. So let's just jump straight into that. I think the best way to start this entire video off is I know what a product is good for the soil or good for the plant the same way a nutritionist or a uh, naturopathic doctor or anyone with nutrition is able to tell you Doritos are bad and lettuce is good. Does that make sense? We can read the labels on the product. We don't have to taste the Doritos. We don't have to do a month long trial of eating bags of Doritos every day to see what it does to our body to understand it can do things like cause obesity, cause diabetes, you know, make us sluggish and lazy. Um, so the same thing goes with fertilizers, just microbial um, amendments. I did a video on how to read micro packages, um, even soil bag, bags of soil, all these things. We're able to look at them and tell you whether or not it's going to work. And the reason why soil scientists, plant scientists, agronomists are so good at looking at this and telling you these things is because this is what they do every single day with actual customers or clients. So I don't run a tractor with, um, fertilizer on the back of it every day, day in and day out. But I constantly make recommendations as to what types of fertilizer to add, what types of, you know, maybe inoculants you should add. Should you till? Should you not till? I'm able to make all those recommendations to the farmers, to the producers in my industry because of the fact that I'm able to read these labels, I'm able to read the scientific journals, and I'm able to take all that information and compile it for that producer in order to give them the best recommendation based on their environment, what their soil tests are telling me, that sort of thing. Does that make sense? So this is happening on a large scale between scientists and farmers all the time. And our relationship's really, really good. The farmers trust what we're saying and they don't really, you know, we never hear from a farmer, well, how would you know that it does that? You don't drive the tractor and put the fertilizer down, do you? And they'd be right, we don't, but they trust our knowledge and what we're telling them, right? So with that being said, as a houseplant person or as a gardener, there are some things that you may wanna look for when you're looking at plant labels. The same rule is going to apply across the board. Whenever I look at a product label, I usually skip the front entirely and I just go straight to the back. I skip the whole top half and I usually just head straight to the bottom. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the ingredients, the sources of those ingredients, and then the guaranteed minimum analysis um, in percentage along with the actual type of phosphorus or potassium source in the actual product in and of itself. So the guaranteed minimum analysis is something that's done either by the FDA, it'll be done by Air Food, Agriculture Canada, and it is a minimum guaranteed analysis. So this is like a legally stated 
thing. Um, if they don't have that on there, it likely means that they just haven't gotten it tested before. Um, they could tell you theoretically what it would be, but they wouldn't be able to actually put it on their product labels if they haven't gotten it verified by a government body. So we always want to see this on there because fertilizer in both gardening, whether we realize it or not, and in the farming industry is done by weight. So we know how much to add um, because it is by weight. And the reason it's done by weight and sold by weight and why this guaranteed minimum analysis matters so much is because too much fertilizer can do serious, serious harm to our environment. And this is why I am not a huge advocate for just dumping on loads of compost and manure willy nilly every year, because you can contribute to things like eutrophication, um, just even like algae blooms in local environments, maybe not necessarily the Great Lake area, like we see in some areas in Ontario, Manitoba, that sort of thing, but even the Saskatchewan, we can cause some issues here. So that's something to keep in mind. Now they do have generally the same brand will have the same breakdown, but what you're looking for is the the format of your potassium your phosphate your nitrogen your sulfur if it's on there as well and you want to make sure that it's in either a bioavailable form or a stable form so for nitrogen you may just see an n you may also see no2 or no3 behind it all of which are okay um you may also see like nh4 which is like a very stable locked up option of nitrogen, something commonly found in like compost manures, things like that. Um, for phosphate, you're gonna see things like P2O5, so uh, phosphorus pentaoxide. Looks like guys standing there with their hands up in the air. Um, you might also see like phosphate, which would be a PO3, things like in and around there. Um, when it comes to potassium, it's going to say potassium or it's going to say potash. Now, if it says potassium, that usually means that it's a in, inorganic product because potassium is just potash rock that has been refined a little bit more. They're literally pretty much the same thing. So I kind of find it funny, but, um, this one here is soluble potash, meaning it is literally potash rock stuck in water and solubilized and it's k2o in this case so that's kind of what we're looking for there our ingredients wise this is this is a potassium product it's a 006 so on the back i should only be seeing a uh, potassium and i do see potassium hydroxide and then i also see an ecophilum nodaceum so again this is a stabilizing ingredient it just helps keep everything suspended nicely in the product but a quick google is going to tell you what that is if there's anything ever on the bottle that says like bat guano or um cow manure none of that matters that's not um i mean it matters if you're buying cow manure you want it to say 100 percent cow manure you don't want it to say you know, 50% topsoil, 50% cow manure, right? You want to say 100% cow manure. But um, when it comes to like fertilizers, organic, you want less ingredients here, similar to the Doritos. We don't want the Doritos because it has too many ingredients in it. We want the lettuce because the only ingredient is lettuce. And so the same thing goes with our ingredients on our product labels. Now, all this garbly glue gl up here really doesn't matter too much. Um, if it has like special this and unique that and just ignore all of it, it's just verbiage. They're just trying to sell you stuff is what it comes down to. Um, you just need like the raw hard facts. If you're looking at microbe bottles, then we want to make sure we're looking for CFUs um, or like any sort of measuring. I mean, some of them will use different types of ways of measuring it, but I did a whole video on how to read micro packages. That's kind of the main get up there. Whenever buying uh, things, you know, dry versus water, I mean, granular is always better than liquid forms of it. The exception to that would be organic because anything that is liquid organic 
has technically been suspended in a nice moist environment for a longer period of time. So there will be just naturally more decomposition and just processing happening in the bottle. So if you're going organic liquid, it's actually your best shot. Um, if you're going for inorganic, then a dry granular is actually probably your better shot for your wallet, not because it's inferior, like liquids inferior in the inorganic industry. It's just better bang for your buck when it comes to the product in and of itself. Just make sure you keep it dry and nice and whatever else, but yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on doing my reviews on uh, different stuff. You guys just have to let me know what products you want me to do a review on and I can do that. But I just wanted to come on here and tell you that reading labels and knowing what these nutrients can do, um, just what the microbe amendments can do, maybe a special mix of potting soil. If someone says something's unique in it, I can right away maybe call bowl shakalaka on it pretty quickly. Oh, because I mean, I know what plants eat for lack of a better term or what they jive with and what's just kind of, you know, industry speaking, uh, filler type stuff, selling type stuff. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.